Hey, Alexa. Uh, I have Alexa at my house. Hey, Alexa, play 1480 WHBC. We're on TuneIn, the iHeartRadio app, and Radio.com. Thank you for what you do. I wish I could listen more than I do. Hey, the roadman, Kenny Rohde here. I just want to say thank you for listening to WHBC. My wife has it on the computer, so that when I walk into the door, I don't miss a beat. News Talk 1480 WHBC. You know, I just wanted to call and thank you for everything you do. We go where you go. The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist. And joining us again this week is Dr. Ahmed Sabi, president of the Heart Hospital at Mercy Medical Center. Dr. Sabi, welcome back. We're looking forward to talking to you again today. And thanks for joining us. Good morning. All right. About 2.5% of the U.S. population has valvular heart disease. But it is more common in older adults. Valvular heart disease is when any valve in the heart is damaged or diseased. There are several causes of valve disease. Last Friday, we focused on traditional aortic valve replacement. And today, we're going to talk about TAVR, or transcatheter aortic valve replacement. We'd like to remind our listeners that today's program is also available on our podcast. You can download it from the App Store on your favorite mobile phone. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime. As a reminder, I wanted to touch base as a public service before we begin our program today and remind everyone that if you haven't had your flu vaccine yet, we still have flu vaccine available. I was uh, doing some doctor call visits yesterday, and most doctor's offices also are advertising on their doors that they still have flu vaccine available. I know everyone is very concerned about the coronavirus Please keep in mind that the flu virus has already killed 14,000 people in this country this year, and it is more serious right now than the coronavirus. So you can take general precautions, you know, wash your hands, simple things. Don't touch your face when you're out and about in public, you know, wash your hands. Um, Take care of your body, take care of your immune system, make sure you're getting enough sleep, make sure that you're controlling and managing your stress and You know, we have some vitamins and supplements at the pharmacy that can help boost your immune system and give you that competitive advantage from a multivitamin to vitamin D or probiotics or even some other herbal products. So take care of yourself and take the flu virus serious because it is a serious situation. Um, In addition, as another public service, we have um, another educational opportunity in New Philadelphia next month on Thursday, March 5th. We're going to have our uh, nec- the next series of our low-dose naltrexone and CBD oil product information session. We're going to review some of the scientific literature and the basis for use for both products in autoimmune disease and chronic pain. So I encourage you guys to uh, check it out on our website. You can look at MedShopRx.com events. Um, we also have flyers in the store, and um, we have information on our Facebook page. So please... Uh, Take a look at that if you have chronic pain or if you're having issues or you just have questions about CBD and wonder if it's for you. So, Dr. Preventive medicine. Good job. I guess I don't have to ask you to introduce yourself again. Right. So we're there. Okay. <laughs> we're there. I like the preventive medicine <laughs> message. Because it's, it's, it's so – people – when they see you killed that many, they get scared. But just to think about quality of life, you don't have to go through the agony of being in the hospital, being intubated to treat, to treat you. You don't have to only worry about dying. You know, your quality of life, the days you are alive, you want to be healthy. So your immunity and preventive medicine is a great message. I like that. Thank you. And I'm sure you guys have done things at mercy to prepare for flu season and other situations everybody does (laughs) is is the hospital restrictive on who can come in and go Uh, Uh, well the the the, i think it's a part of the public health initiatives is that every hospital has their precautions they they require if you if if you don't have the flu vaccine you have to have a mask you have to protect Uh, the hand wash is major initiative you know you go after 
the doctors remind them, the employee, and uh, every week you go over this. Prevention is is important. You can avoid a lot of hassles uh, when you just do the right thing. Well, Doctor, um, we're here today again to talk about last week when you were on the air, we missed some things. And and you're back today to kind of um, go over some things that we did miss. And uh, we want to talk about uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR for short. Right. So what can you tell us? Well, well, it it is, uh, if if the same audience are there, last week we talked about the customary treatment for severe aortic stenosis, which has been there for decades to go for surgical replacement. And we went over, it's a good option, but it to go through it, it's a quite a load on uh, on some of the patients who are elderly, has some comorbid uh, conditions to be in the hospital, just open and they have all this intubation, whatever. So the option of doing it very minimal invasive because sometimes you call minimal invasive if if the surgeon put you to sleep intubated you but did not crack the chest in the middle he have a side opening in the chest can we this can is, we get underneath the ribs is that what we're in doing between or? the ribs you're okay. absolutely okay. right and that's how you call it minimal invasive so sometimes the audience will mix the minimal invasive here is no you don't go to sleep you are awake. Mm-hmm. There is no cut, and and <laughs> so be, be, you you will be awake, and we will do it like doing the heart cast. The heart cast procedure is just you go sure. so through the vessel, go up to the heart. So this option became available in uh, 2002 when the first it was first done in in Europe, and then studies came, and now it's an uh, acceptable option. And we we started doing this few years ago to our patient, and. Uh, it's really uh, the, th- those patients who are in their old age and as they start having the symptoms, the, the, their life has changed because, because no short of breath, no chest pain, the dizziness and the near syncope, they feel more energy. And between one day and the other, without having to, to go through any recovery because they come in the morning, we, we get them to the cast lab, we sedate them, put the valve, get out. That night, walk, uh, walk around. If your groin is okay where we did, there is no bleeding or whatever, we send you home same day. Hmm. So we, we, they said, can I do anything? I said, the precaution is for the groin, for the axis where we got. Yeah. We usually, if we use a heart cast uh, axis groin, we ask the patient to take it easy, don't lift heavy stuff for a few days, and then within a week you can do whatever you want. Hmm. That's about the only restriction. So they can't wait, and the most of them, 99.9 of them, will feel the difference very early. Hmm. I can breathe better, I am alive, I feel good, which it's, it's so rewarding when you can help uh, your patient. So why through the groin? Is that because the vessel's real large and right. get a straight, uh, straight run to the heart? And, uh, and uh, um, uh, it's a good point uh, because some of the audience, if, if, if some of them were my patient and they will remember that we did not use the groin for the valve, uh, it's not uncommon to have, at a certain age, people has hardening of their arteries, so their, their leg arteries are so bad, you cannot put the big sheath through it. So what we do for this, I use this uh, artery of, of the arm. I did this and did well, and if the artery of the arm is not big enough, we, we make a small cut to get the artery from outside the chest wall. So some of them, the, the, the femoral artery, which in, in the groin, is not big enough to deliver the valve. Oh, I see. I, I, I was thinking, I guess, that, that, that 
this area would always be primary because it's so close to the heart. No? Well, it makes sense because when they start the, the procedure, uh, with, especially with surgeons doing this, they used to make a cut at the, at the chest, get to the ventricle, to the apex of the heart, and yeah. to put the valve like backward, get inside the ventricle and do it. And they find out that it's less trauma on the body for this age and better outcome when you go in the vessels. Or closer to the heart, it would not really matter a lot as long as you have a big artery enough to pass your valve because the valve is relatively large. It's not a small catheter like the one we go inside the coronary to get the angiogram to check if you have blockage. If you have blockage and they even put a stent, still very small catheter, I can use the, the hand. Most of the time I use the wrist radial to do the stent and then you go home same day. You come in the morning, I check the angio, I put your stent in the heart, small artery. But for the valve, the technology is not there yet. It, when they started, it was quite larger catheter. Now it's getting smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. And maybe the day will come. I, you know, there is a lot of stuff over the years. You look forward no much how, how no matter how much vision you have, you always get surprised. The technology comes and show you stuff. You wouldn't believe this stuff can be happy. So I don't know. Maybe they will make the valve that small one day and we can put it through your hand. I don't know. Gosh. <laughs> but but, but, but it, is, it is really amazing technology for those patients. It's very hard to put yourself in the shoes of others. Yeah. Although we, we, have, we have this empathy. Remember the emergency chest pain center at Mercy. The E was for empathy. So f- for many years, we thought we like to feel for you. It's very hard. But once you really get into the shoes of a patient, you will know what, what that means. Mm. It, 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 you know, you try to look at the eyes of your patient and figure, but it, 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 it makes a big difference. And making a, a, a difference in, 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 in a brother human, like we are all brothers and sisters, it it just satisfies something inside you. The whole money of the world cannot satisfy it. There is something about helping others. It gets inside your psychology, make you balance it. Hmm. Okay, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't, our commitment to your health. Stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. 
The Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville has a lot of special sales going on right now. Clothing, toys, spray paints, hardware, candy, and all spring and summer items are reduced. We're cleaning house because more merchandise is coming in. Also in the store, we're having many single items that are drastically reduced for quick sale. See us on Facebook or our website, halfoffhotbuy.com. The Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And remember, still time to get your flu shot at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Is CBD oil right for you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answers don't come from a convenience food store or a mall kiosk. Your Medicine Center pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. Our pharmacists have been trained to provide expert CBD oil information to tailor therapies like CBD capsules, tinctures, lotions, and ointments to your particular need. We have the highest quality, organic, Colorado-grown, non-GMO, full-spectrum CBD oil products. Visit the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia. Welcome back to Health Matters at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are talking with Dr. Sabi from Mercy Heart Hospital. All right, so before the break, you were telling us about how quickly a patient can get treatment for a valve replacement with the TAVR procedure and go home. And um, compared to the traditional process, right. I'm guessing that speeds it up by how many days? Probably. Well, uh, uh, if you're in your 80s and they go for valve replacement, at least four or five days in the hospital. Wow. <laughs> and the recovery time, quite a few weeks after you go home. So by the, by the time you will appreciate the the regain of your strength and the resolution of your dizziness and short of breath, it will take a couple of months because you will be unable to do a lot in the recovery time. Recovery, when you crack the chest open in the 80s, is so different than when you are in your 50s because the body process for healing takes a while. Sure. So, and that, that's what the blessing about those. Those population, you come and uh, you do it in, in a day or two because uh, you remember the one on, uh, on, our, on our website. She was 97, and we, we did not send her same day. We sent her next morning. Next day. <laughs> but uh, but she, it, it, was, it was such a so, – so the difference is great. Uh, so some of them will not know the difference because they've never been through an open heart, and that's – that, that's the nature of life. You try to ask somebody who went to throw it, and then that, that's how the, the people re- really make a decision. It's, mm. it's, not, it's very hard to, to sit the comparison if you didn't go through it. But you hear about it, yeah, I will do this. That's, it's, it's, it's very common. A lot of people will go into procedures without asking enough to know what's available. Okay, so how about that? What should an informed patient ask their provider if they have, if they need a valve replacement? What would you, as a well-trained physician, know? I mean, what would what, what should they know? It's it's a great question because, actually, yesterday, I I, I had to do a heart cast on a patient who was referred for TAVR, and then. He was elderly, so I asked him about the symptoms. He said, I feel all right. Do you do enough? Yeah, I can shuffle the snow. Or do you get short of breath? No. Do you get chest pain? No. Do you feel dizzy? Or No. So I said, he has, he has narrow valve. Remember last week I said the heart will do some compensatory mechanism. So I went to the, his wife and his uh, daughter. And I asked, they said, yeah, they confirm. I said, well, there's no rush to do it. Uh, well, the question always come, if we didn't do it, is he going to make it or not? You know, humans are so embedded in their head about fear of dying. Although in every religion I know in the world, it's not to be changed 
And I can say this when I work for the sisters, but other places, some people will have a trouble. But in every religion I know, your day born, your day die is already predetermined. Nobody can make it faster. And if you go look at the statistics to commit suicide, go read it. The last time I looked at one out of 20, there is people who have the gun here and shoot and they're still alive. Why is that? Because you can't go ahead of a schedule. And if, if we know this, that's what he said. He said, if you see me, if you see the father, you should not have fear and worry. When you forget him, you, I think, will deserve it to be in fear and worry. So, so I said, well, I, I, I personally don't do any procedure thinking I can make him live longer. In his day comes, he goes. I look for quality of life. And how can I make him feel better if he feel okay? And if you have any issue, I can put him in a treadmill because there's sometimes I do this. I wanted to be sure really he has symptoms or not because some people under you say, no, I feel all right. And they are not. So in order to do this procedure, you have to have one of the three major symptoms. Why? Because studies for years said once you start having heart failure, most of the people will get in trouble within two years. Once you get that dizziness syncope, most of the people will get in trouble within three years. Once you get chest pain, it's three or more. So we get anything to know that I should, because that's the appropriate criteria. And we are in the top of the world of the appropriate use criteria in our CAS lab. I was showing this data 95.5%. Every procedure done in our CAS lab is indicated. So, so it, it is, it is, it is, it is that you have to have a symptoms. Bottom of the hour, time for the news. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Reliable as ever on News Talk 1480 WHPC. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. If you're worried about the flu and other viruses running around this winter, you need to check out our antiviral and antibacterial products we have in our medicine center pharmacies. We have hand sanitizer sprays for countertops, door handles, wipes, face masks, and many other items to help you stay well. It's also not too late to get a flu shot as well as other immunizations. Plus, don't forget to take a daily multiple vitamin. Our pharmacists recommend Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. So stop in the medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't, our commitment to your health. 
Stop by your local medicine center pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today, Brad and I are discussing heart valve replacement with Dr. Sabi. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. All right, Dr. Sabi, I believe that Mercy Medical Center was the first hospital in Stark County to do the transcatheter aortic valve replacement. How long has this procedure been in place? Uh, since it, uh, 2002, nationally has been there. And uh, years back, when they decided to make the, the studies, human, human study to have the FDA approval, I actually the, the, the invited the physicians who has experience with the valve in invasive procedure. I've been doing the balloon, balloon valvoplasty dealing with these valves. We used to just go down the valve and crack it open by a balloon and people feel good and we find out within a year or two it hardened again mm. so those physicians who has experience I've been doing valves since 1988 so I went to this study investigators meetings and they require in order to be part of the study to have the hybrid lab means a, a, a cardiac cast lab, large enough, big enough to accommodate emergency open heart surgery. And unfortunately, I couldn't get our institution to put the resources to make this enough. So I was not part of the study. So I waited until the FDA approval and I went down to use it. And I... <laughs> The commitment to our patient here is coming from a major responsibility because if you come to me as a, as a, as a patient, here is how I look at you. And that's God is my witness. I look at you as I see you and your father who cares about you. And the father always close to his kid when he's sick. The father is not going when his kid is sick here, will be sitting down in a prayer place, whatever. He's here in front of me. So if, if, if this is a father I'm going to see one day, I have to be so honest to his kid. So when I, when I wanted to start a new procedure, I did not want to mislead the people around me and the calm because there is something in you. I want it to be as perfect as it can be. And it's proven this way. Our results from the beginning till now, one of the best in the nation. Our outcome, because the, the, there is a registry for, for TAVR, national registry. Any patient is done, has to go all the data into this uh, bank of, of information. And we get our results comparative to what's happening. Uh, it's impressive when you see how Mercy does with this for for the outcome, for the complication, for length of stay in the hospital. Of course, it's it's unbelievable how how we have short, shortest length of stay, and also for the time the procedure is being done. They, they even measure the floral time, and we come out of the curve. It's it's coming when when when. It's like within, sometimes I do it within 15 minutes. Patient come to the lab, we do it. A team is amazing. We, we, you know, when I wasn't teaching, you usually teach a doctor to fellow, to train him. And then two, three years ago, he goes in his own and tried to build his experience. Uh, we train our nurses and technician and they stay with us. So they don't to go away. So they are so good. Like, like like the doctors you train. And we continue to do this. In our, in our heart lab, we don't have any young doctor to train. We do everything from A to Z ourselves. And that's, if somebody come to me, he said, uh, it's only one hour to go to the best place for the heart, the Cleveland Clinic. Why do you think you are, you are so honest and you are 
watching the father and they tell me stay here. I tell him, I guarantee for you when you come here, the doctor who will touch you, who will do your procedure has been doing this every day for years first hand. There is no young doctor to train. I'm not against teaching because I was a teacher everywhere I went. I teach young doctors. But how can I, I, I let you come to my lab and stop you from driving to the best place in the heart in the world? I, I have to have a good reason. And that's enough for me. I am going to do it all myself. You will come to my lab. If I do radial, I don't put people to sleep. They are awake. They see me. They talk to me about stuff. I said, I'm done. Are you <laughs> serious? I said, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So I show up at your hospital yes. in an ambulance, okay? And they drag that's me in there, and they say, well, this guy needs a new valve, okay? How long between that moment and you're putting a new valve in me? Uh, that's a, a technical question, and in order to be totally honest, because I did this when I was in med general in Harvard years ago, when we used to get people in ambulance have heart failure because severe aortic stenosis. Traditionally, if those people go to surgeries, you don't do well. Almost everybody die. Okay. When you are in heart failure in the middle of the problem, the, the only procedure which can help you is valvoplasty. I, I go inside the valve, open it, relax it, and, and do it. Okay, I don't so, do so the valve right so away. So that's a survival issue to Absolutely, keep you alive. Absolutely, because I want you to be in a better condition. Okay. I want your, the fluid to clear from your lung. I want your pressure to come So up. this is not an emergency procedure replacing a valve? No, oh, okay. it's not. Well, okay. It shouldn't be. Uh, yeah. uh, well, it, it, yes, you're absolutely right because we want we are going to leave a, a, an artificial valve inside your heart, so we better be perfect in sizing and everything. Okay. And that's we'll need uh, outpatient workup like a CT. They check the arteries of the periphery to see okay. which which axis we use, and they get accurate measure of how. How large is the valve? We but have you, different sizes. But you can open that valve in an emergency procedure. I can. I, okay. I used to be the only one here, and they used to get, to take me between the two major hospitals so, years so, ago, give me privilege. I go there one day. I <laughs> help. You know, I, I, I'm, of course, because when somebody's sick, you don't think about anybody else except yeah. this is his father is looking over his kid. Help him. It, it, and I, I did this for years. Actually. So, so how do you do that with a balloon? You open it right. Yeah, over the you balloon? go, you go, you go in the artery, cross the valve with a wire, slide over the wire a balloon, inflate the balloon so all the calcium you crack it open, the heart breathes, and you get the okay. patient better. Okay, interesting. Wow. And because it will take a while to re-narrow, so but you get him out of emergency. Okay, hmm. so all valves aren't the same size. That- no, they are not. <laughs> Uh, like uh, hearts are different sizes exactly. where, where exactly. the identity for the for the miraculous God who make everybody look different. This is yeah. unbelievable. It's, a, it's just a miracle. So as a review, yes, the valve replacement is from a pig or from it can be from either. I, I think I, I think it, it, it is it is from the pericardium. It's it's from an animal. You know, it could be I think it could be a cow, it could be oh, really? a pig, okay. yeah. But no artificial valves? Uh, so far, because the metallic valve is the more durable, will work for so many years, 20-something, and that's the option available if you are young. If you are young and and you life is ahead of you, I don't think I will use this valve. Because this valve... According to our statistics, maybe 11, 15 years, and you may need another one. Hmm. And in that time period, technology may change so dramatically that, right. that a whole other world opens up. Right. Okay. Right. Huh. So, so they, they are doing the study now for young, young patient to use it. It will be a patient a choice, but patient will trust you. So you have to be, as a physician, the trust is so important. You, you have to come and they tell him what is available. And if you ask your own opinion, you share it with him. And that's simple. So coming into the hospital in an emergency situation in an ambulance, the first goal is to stabilize that person, right? Absolutely. His heart. I mean, you, 
somehow you got to get that heart working properly, even if it's only for a short period of time or whatever, until you come up with some some other solution. It's it's it's. Uh... It will act like a survival thing, especially when you hard to stop outside of the hospital. And there is nothing today I am aware of parallel to what we do in our emergency room. This Dr. Sabika slept in our emergency room. is There's nobody else has this. And I used it to, to have a conference to present the, the patients who came in full cardiac arrest and you do CPR. You can't put him in any hospital. You have to stop CPR because I can't get a pulse or blood pressure. Mm. Those people who work on in the cast lab and they survive, I used to present to them every every four years in February 29. We make a big gathering because February 29, you're obligated to do it every four years. So like tomorrow, if we were still doing this, it will be a big conference when you invite the survivors who came to our emergency room, by all criteria, if they go to any emergency room in the world, and I am really to challenge this. I like if anybody <laughs> hear it and say, Dr. Seba, I prove you wrong, I will answer it. Okay. You can't have to run a code for more than half an hour, and you can't get pulse blood pressure and think this patient will survive. Wow. Those are the survival we used to present every four years hmm. since 19... Uh, 98 when we start all of this and we still the only one <laughs> amazing you're listening to health matters with the medicine center for pharmacy you're listening to health matters with the medicine center pharmacy and your hosts pharmacists paul white and brad white remember you can get more information right now by visiting medshoprx.com that's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Men like Paul White love studio arts and glass. Why? We wrap all of his gifts. Gifts like hand-blown paper whites, ornaments, jewelry, and stunning sterling silver and precious stones like amethyst and crystals. After 30 years, Studio Arts and Glass is known for creating and restoring stunning stained glass. Just ask Paul White. Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. If you're worried about the flu and other viruses running around this winter, you need to check out our antiviral and antibacterial products we have in our medicine center pharmacies. We have hand sanitizer sprays for countertops, door handles, wipes, face masks, and many other items to help you stay well. It's also not too late to get a flu shot as well as other immunizations. Plus, don't forget to take a daily multiple vitamin. Our pharmacists recommend Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. So stop in the Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. The Half Off and Hot by Store in Louisville has a lot of special sales going on right now. Clothing, toys, spray paints, hardware, candy, and all spring and summer items are reduced. We're cleaning house because more merchandise is coming in. Also in the store, we're having many single items that are drastically reduced for quick sale. See us on Facebook or our website, halfoffhotbuy.com. The Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And remember, still time to get your flu shot at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Thanks for joining us today. And Dr. Sabi and Brad and myself are really bantering around some stuff here, so we got to get back to this. 
<laughs> back to the show. Well, I guess I wanted to touch on a couple things that I think are interesting. I think when you talk about any type of heart condition or surgery, it probably immediately instills panic in the patient and their family. Right. And I'm thinking about um, – I've had a heart cath because I had an issue years ago that was – very scary. Okay. Um, and I was awake during that while they did it. And so right. it's amazing when you see your body parts up there on the big right. screens and right. stuff. Right. But it fascinates me that you can be awake during your valve replacement that you've been, been right. talking right. about. So I just, I guess um, it obviously is not painful. And it must be so quick that you can, it, it's basically like having a heart cath, but you get to do some other things and repair a valve and nobody's the wiser. And then you go back to your room and recover and you're on your way to being well. Well, the difference uh, uh, in order to put the valve in position, you have to figure how to stop the heart from beating. So we don't stop the heart, but we, we put a temporary pacemaker to make the heart go very fast. So it wouldn't be pushing the valve. It will be almost shaking. We go like one, 150, 160 beat per minute. Huh. At that time, there is no much uh, blood going to your head. So the patient will feel like some, like, like that fainting or something yeah. some people would that's is a difference okay between the heart cast you got and the valve that's about the, the difference the groin stuff is like numb, numb the groin and they get there so that uh, the, at the time when we put the valve they feel like fainting okay seconds you know it's, we, we can't we can't deprive the, the brain from blood so it, it just we don't stop the heart but we make it go very fast so it wouldn't push my valve when i put the valve in the right place so do you this may be elementary do you stitch the valve in place or how no, does that it's work a stinted valve okay so the valve come like a smooshed okay. with the stint outside and a balloon inside the valve so once we inflate the balloon the stint stick to the old valve and the muscle and the anchor there and doesn't move. It's amazing. <laughs> now, you don't recycle the blood on a valve replacement. No, right? no, no. The but, heart but what, doesn't what stop. What coronary operations do you take the blood out of the... It's when you do an open heart surgery. If you have, because you have to stop the heart. Okay. To cut through it and to get clean the old valve, put the, old, the new valve in. At that time, the heart is stopping, so you have to figure a way to oxygenate the blood and send it to the brain. So when you okay, so they take the blood out from the venous side, okay, get it out to a machine to run it and to give oxygen. And that, and that machine that's still, a bypass machine. That machine still cooked up to the body and, and circulates the blood to the brain. It, it, yes, it takes the blood out to the machine, it oxygenates it and run it back to the to the arterial side so the okay. brain will have blood we have this machine now portable that's what i use in the emergency room this is was also a history first bypass machine used in emergency room because we have the patient and he was in cpr couldn't get him back i need to ha know how to work with him so i put him in bypass through the groin get the blood out put it back so the heart to stop until we fix it so how do you stop the heart well, uh, in 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 uh, OR, they give some solutions like uh, they they can stop the heart by giving a, a potassium. Or there is a way the heart will will relax and doesn't squeeze anymore. Okay. Well, how about starting it? You shock it? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Just, just like the the paddles on the right. Okay. Right. All right. <laughs> Very interesting. Gosh, <laughs> it's amazing. So how about in our last couple of minutes, we talk a little bit about prevention, since we were talking about prevention earlier in the show for disease. How about uh, from the cardiologist expert, what are your best practices to take care of your heart for lung healthy quality of life right, right. practices? Well, again, I will get back to ECPC. This 1995. Those four letters were trying to be our motto to handle our patient in the heart center. The, the E for empathy 
and the C4 clinical, you are coming for, uh, for, for, for a clinical, and the P for physical. So you, you don't want to ignore the patient when you, when, you, when you take care of the problem. So we, we try, if he's a smoker, we get some consultation to help him how to quit smoking. And if you come to, to the heart, we have some education, diet consult to educate him what to do and uh, advice about the phys- physical activity. And it's essentially trying, it, it's, it, it's, not, it's my personal philosophy. If you have a car and there's a car in your garage, Every day you turn it on, you hear the motor, you are happy, your car is okay, has no symptoms. No, the car is not supposed to be in a garage and just run the motor. The car has to go out of the street, drive in the freeway, so you can see if there is issue. Our body was created by the utmost engineer of the universe is not to sit around, use the remote yeah. control and go in the elevator. We will support. So we are trying to reset by our instruction how we were created. We are now with the old technology. We think we are alive because you turn the car on in the garage. No, you have to be active in order to know because our, our, our body is amazing. Uh, remember when you have a small car, you look in the monitor, one, two. If it is very expensive car because a lot of money invested, you see so many monitors, it will indicate. Yeah. If it is an airplane, it's half of it monitors. Yeah. Why? We are better than this because we're created by the supreme engineer. So our body has so many alarming signs. But if, if you get out as you create it, you have to do this, you do this, people will be healthy. And you will feel, oh, something is not, is not right. I go seek uh, medical management. And, and the science now is helping us because our lifestyle with all this technology resulted in our car is in the garage, you just turn it on, we are alive. We are not doing much. So, so we come tell them, hey, you do this, you eat this, you take this supplementation, you get your, your immunity up, as you said. I liked this because immunity can defense you like crazy. And the immunity is affected by how we stress ourselves, how people communicate with each other. Uh, the, the, the stuff you supply because the food is not enough, unfortunately. Why? Because this is not the food meant for us. It's not the, ga, ga, the, the type of gasoline for your car. The, the, the smart engineer alter everything around us. So what we eat, it wasn't meant for us. That was, he makes the apple so red, so big. Well, this is not the <laughs> apple I used to see when I was a kid. <laughs> so our food is different. So <laughs> there is a need for what you are trying to do because things are changing around us. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Well, we used to eat the apple with a worm in it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's it's becoming now, and people think I go organic. It's really great. How can how can you you lock yourself out? The water has something, so you might as well <laughs> trust but verify. Come to you to give us whatever you have. <laughs> well, we'd be happy to ask answer questions. So you're right. Uh, we're thrilled that you could join us today and share your wisdom. What about statins? Uh, it, every study published will say you lower your cholesterol, you are better off. Yeah. Uh, and and, and it, you, you can't really. Uh, and, and some people will not tolerate it, so we try to figure something. But yeah. this is a lot, there, there is, I can tell you, if I want a conclusion about coronary artery disease, if you have it in your genes, my advice is that you can avoid having a heart attack if you have it in your gene by being obsessive compulsive about preventive sure, measures. Yeah, sure. The number one, two, three, four, five, six is smoking. Yeah, Don't geez. sit around smokers. Okay, doctor, we're out of here. Yeah. We didn't have enough time again. This is nuts. <laughs> okay. It's all right. Thanks for joining us Thank on Health so Matters with nice. the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Uh, Thanks to our sponsors, Studio Arts and Glass, Mercy Medical Center, and we'll see you again 
next Friday right here on News Talk 1480. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. WHBC AM 10, reliable as ever on News Talk 1480 WHBC.